Hey crafty friends, this is Jen from Katahdin Crafts and welcome to our Spring Lawn Fawn Fans YouTube Hop. We are friends from around the world that all are in love with Lawn Fawn. Our Spring Hop sponsor is Only One Life Creations and they are generously giving out a $50 shopping spree which is also open to international folks. For my project for this hop, I chose to do a slimline card and I combined some of the 2021 spring release of Lawn Fawn with some of my old Lawn Fawn that I had. The first thing I did was use the large slimline with a slider set and I used the largest frame in that and I cut two different panels. In one I'm going to ink up with Mode Lawn Oxide Ink and I'm going to do that along the edge and along the corner. And there is a lot of ink blending in this project today. Lots and lots. When I'm done with that panel, I'm going to set that aside and let that dry for a bit. And now I'm going to take another piece of cardstock and use tea dye oxide ink along with walnut. And I'm just going to blend those together. And this is going to be my tree trunks. So no rhyme or reason. I'm just going to get the ink on the paper and just let it have a little variation. And then again, I'm going to set this aside and let this dry too before I cut out the die cuts. And next I'm going to work on the sections for the sun, which I'm using scattered straw. And then when I start using the green, I'm going to use the mowed lawn that was already on the brush. At first I'm just showing you how I wiped down my area between each layer of ink. Because I do use the mat to blot off just a little bit of the ink so you don't get a harsh um, line when you start and as you can see I've kind of used a heavy hand and I did wrinkle up my paper a little bit my cardstock But that's okay because I'm gonna just cut that out anyway if that was a cardstock or car Yeah, cardstock panel easy for me to say I would have been in a little bit of trouble because I did buckle it now for my sky I'm using my very favorite color that I always use for skies and that is tumbled glass I probably should change that up a bit, but you know what I love the effect that this gives so if you like it, why change it, right? So I'm gonna just do that on the top. And I like to do a little bit of a heavier area on the corners and kind of give that a vignette when I do my ink blending. And now I'm gonna put a little sponge sugar right in the middle. And that pinkish and the blue will also make some purple. So you're gonna have a little bit of purple, blue, and pink just from those two colors. And I'm gonna just blend that through. I didn't even ink that brush back up. I am just going to use what's on there and just blend that down and get it close to where I believe that the grass line will be. And now this is that panel that I inked up earlier with the mowed lawn. I cut that using Lawn Fawn's Slimline Stitched Hillside Borders. And then I'm also using the leafy tree backdrop in landscape. And I'm cutting out the big section for behind the tree branch. And I will be using that frame as well for my large tree trunk. So I'm just layering that down. And you can see I cut the brown that I inked up from the tree trunk. And now I'm just going to cut that frame right off and use that large tree like a border on the edge. And you can see the way I cut out all of the pieces that I'm still having the stitched look on all the edges. Now this card had a ton of die cutting so I pre die cut everything out and I still wasn't really sure which colors I was going to use so I did die cut extra but wait till you see this. This is a crazy amount of die cuts. <laughs> so for my houses and all of the accessories I'm using Lawn Fawn's Build a House plus I'm using several of their different add-ons. They have a gingerbread add-on and they also have a new spring add-on and that's what I'm featuring today. I'm using a lot of um, items from that particular set. But I, like I said, I'm also digging into the regular Build-A-House, the gingerbread Build-A-House add-on, and the spring. I, they do have a Halloween version out and I did not use any of those today. Okay, so playing with assembling this, these were, it was kind of like playing with, you know, paper dolls, but in the house form. <laughs> there's all different ways to build them. Um, there's the different windows, doors, steps, um, 
planting boxes and hanging baskets. It's so much fun and there's so many pieces to choose from. So it did take me a little while to plan out and decide how I was going to go. And you know, there's no right or wrong because there's so many different choices. It's almost kind of like mind boggling because there are so many and maybe I shouldn't have cut so many out because <laughs> I definitely made it very mind boggling, but I really am super happy with this card in the end, but it's just a playing game. And right here with the flowers, all of a sudden it dawned on me what those little die cuts were for the middle. They were for the little flower centers. So do you ever have that? Like sometimes they're so intricate, the die cuts, and it's almost like you have to kind of puzzle it together. I had that with the little mailbox today too, but in the long run, it's so fun. I love all the different layers that they have in, yeah, it's just, it's amazing. So now I'm building up my skyline and my trees. I did get those trees from the Pivot Pop Up Lawn Fawn. They have a couple little clouds and some tree trunks and some of the tree backgrounds. I'm not really sure what you call those, but like the little bushes, you could use those as bushes too. And of course they all have that stitch look. And then I also use the Simple Puff Cloud Frames as well. And I use the medium and the small one of those. So what I decided to do at this point was to go off camera and glue everything together because this card has many steps in it and it's already a long video. So I was trying to eliminate just a, a few minutes. So, but right here I pop back on to show you how I backed the windows and the door because I didn't want those to be see-through. I didn't want to see the tree trunks and stuff in the background. So I just backed that with a little bit of like a grayish blue. And then with these tulips, I needed to give them a little color. So I used the YG67 and the R27. Now you'll, you'll see with today's card, I am not putting a lot of emphasis on my coloring. I'm doing very simple coloring because the die cuts were really the focus of my card. So just very simple coloring today. Okay, so now I'm back and I have assembled most of the card. I got all the house in, houses together, but I got a little over exuberant, exuberant with the gluing of the doors. And now my poor little doors do not open any longer. So that's my bad. So if you are gonna back that with something, just be really cautious and make sure that you don't stick it. I guess probably what I should have done, you know, hindsight is 2020, I should have put the door on and then backed it behind the house. But yeah, I didn't do it that way. So my little doors don't want to open anymore. And I wasn't going to start over and I just went with it. So that's what we do. We just drive on and come up with plan B. So now I'm just going to assemble everything the way I think that I would like it. I put together all those little trees and all of that. So these are the tiny friend set that just came out this spring and how cute are they and so versatile. It was this concept with my, my build a house that I had and then seeing these little people and seeing the generations on there that made me think about this card about sending a distant hug because I know I'm like a lot of other people. I have not really seen my parents a lot in this last year. They live 12 miles away, but I really haven't seen them that much. It's kind of crazy, actually. So that is where this concept was born. And what I did here was stamp this out on Copic Friendly paper with Copic Friendly ink, which is the Lawn Fawn Jet Black. And now I'm just going to color these up. I do have the caps on the edges. So you can see and follow along. I know it's super sped up or it's, and it's about to be even faster, but we've got a lot going on in this card. So what I chose to do was did different skin tones to blend the family a little bit. Um, I'm This is my imagination. I always have a little story that goes with my cards or generally I do. And so the female, that's her parents. So I did the same color scheme for them. And I gave the little girl, one of the little girls, her same coloring. And then I did a darker coloring for the dad and two of the other kids. And I kind of fashioned this after my own family. I have two daughters and a son. And then my husband and I thought of my parents. No, not 
these don't really look like any of us, but you know, I, it's, it's the thought and that's what I'm doing is the thought behind it. So now I'm just going to go ahead and color up their hair and that's the only shading that I really did was in their skin tones and in their hair. The rest of it, the clothing, I didn't worry about two shades at all or three shades. I just went with one. They're very, very tiny spaces. So I knew that I didn't have to focus on blending out those clothes. But how cute are they? It was kind of fun to pick out the color choices though and decide who was going to wear what. And I wanted them to be softer colors and then bolder colors on the kids. And so that's that was just the only thing I thought of. And then I did a dog and a cat. My parents do not have a cat, but we have two cats, two dogs, and a pig. And so I included a, a few pets in there. And now I'm assembling the birdhouse, or the bird bath. <laughs> um, I thought it was super cute, and I kept on trying to play with it and see where I could fit it onto the card. So I don't actually put it onto the front of the card, but it does get used in the long run. And there I am playing with it, again, putting together the puzzle piece. You know, you just kind of have to use your imagination and figure some of these little intricate die cuts out. And then how cute is this? There's so many layers. And let me tell you, that little tiny heart that's in the center of this, I did use those quite a bit in this card, you'll see. But I kept on losing them. I lost the hearts constantly. <laughs> I have, uh, yeah, I kept on having to look underneath everything. And yeah, okay, so that's <laughs> that's that story. At this point, I don't think I know where the red one is that I want to pop in there, but I eventually will find it and get that back in there. All right, and now again, I'm just playing with the positioning because there's so many different choices and so many different ways to do this that I just wanted to see how I could make it look balanced because that's what's really important to me with my card making is balancing it all out. Now I'm just going to start actually layering everything down. And as you can see, this is another mistake that I just made that I'm still not realizing that I made it until after I started watching the video. But I glued that down without slipping that little cloud under. Yeah, yep, <laughs> it happens. So I'm just going to keep on layering until I realize that. So I'm going to add that tree to the side. And I'm okay with it overhanging because I'm just going to snip off the edges after and then putting on the, the houses. Now this panel for the die cut that I used is eight and a half by three and a half size with the stitching. Oh, look it, now I remember that I wanted to slip that cloud underneath there. So I'm using this little handy dandy tool that I have had for ages that if I ever lose it, I'm not sure if they manufacture it anymore and I will be a sad, sad person because it slips right underneath everything and you can make your mistakes go away. Yeah, so now I'm going to slip that under there and it looks like a hot mess. I'm going to stick a little bit of glue and then just add that in or push that down and now nobody will ever know except everybody that's watching the video, right? <laughs> Which I hope a lot of people. Anyway, <laughs> this is how my mind works sometimes. I just go off on a tangent. What I started to say is that the slimline die that I used from that slider set is eight and a half by three and a half. So then my frame today will be eight and three quarters by three and three quarters. And then the card base is going to be my favorite slimline size, which is a nine by four. And now I'm just going to trim off a little bit of those tree trunks to make it the length that I want which was just a little bit shorter. I didn't want them to go extend too far into the little lawn that I'm going to put the family on. And now I'm going to place that sun, but I didn't want to lose the positioning that I had of the sun and then the house. So I'm just going to use a pencil and make a couple marks and then glue that down. And I love my gl liquid glue, as I've said before, because you get a lot of wiggle room. So then you can slide things around for just a few minutes. But you know, if you put down a big piece and then you put a tree on top of it and a house on top of it, it makes it a little harder to get a cloud underneath. But you know, I, I did it. So now we're at the point where I don't remember why I didn't show you that I stamped out the sentiment, but it's I didn't video it, so I apologize for that. But I simply just took part of the long distant hugs 
um, sentiment set that Lawn Vaughn has. I'm not sure when they came out with that, but it must be within this year because it's very fitting. Um, it has that long distance and the distance, and then it also has virtual, and it's sending hugs, smiles. Um, it's a really nice, cute little set. So I'm utilizing that, and I stamp those out, and then I cut them out using um, a little die cut from Tailored Expressions. And now I'm just going to trim off some of that excess, and I've decided that I wanted to leave the peaks of the houses because ultimately they will fit onto the card because of the frame and then the card base being larger and now i finally found a little home for that mailbox and i'm going to put it on there but i'm going to slip that down because i wanted it to look a little bit more realistic with the sizing of the people and i didn't think that being up in the tree plus then i didn't want to cover the tree fully so I just put that down and then this is how I had my people laid out first, my little families. And I wasn't happy with that center being empty. Again, it's about balance. So I needed to figure out how I could fill that. So I'm just playing around with a few more pieces right now. And at this point I was a little sad because I didn't have my other daughter, but there you go. I fit, I figured out how to fit her in. So now I've got my little family and I'm still just trying to figure out how I'm going to put those sentiments and fill that center. They just were not doing what I wanted them to do. I didn't want to really cover the clouds and I knew that I wouldn't be able to trim them down much thinner than they already were. And so when I was trying to fill out the center and figure out the sentiments, I came up with the concept of the hearts going across the sky and those are representing the hugs. So again, part of my story, there go the hugs. So now I'm doing what scares me the most. I couldn't figure out the sentiments, so I decided that I was going to have to directly stamp on the card. <gasps> yes, that's me gasping at the thought. Stamping directly onto a card that's, you know, almost all done and that I've spent hours on is terrifying, but it had to be done. So what I did in order to make it a little bit easier or a little bit you know, less scary. I put a piece of acetate down and then I tested it on that first to make sure I at least had it centered the way I wanted it and not all sorts of wonky. And so I did that and then I'm going to cross my fingers and make sure that it was aligned in the corner. And I'm going to make sure also around the edges, if I got any of the ink on my Misty, that it wasn't going to transfer onto the middle of the project and so hugs didn't come out perfect so I'm gonna again I'm gonna just stamp it that's a lovely thing about a misty but it's still scary going directly onto the project but voila that first step worked and now I'm showing you the cleanup just because I'm showing you how you can clean up that acetate and just take a baby wipe or part of your chamois or something and just wipe that right off so now I need to slip in the distance um, stamp and I didn't do it at the same time because I wanted to make sure that it was a little tighter and super close to the sending. I wanted it right under it, underneath it. And if I didn't even want that spacing between the two stamps um, remaining. So I did it in two separate times. So I just lined that up again with the acetate and I, I was happy with that. So I went with that um, and just directly stamped that on. Still nervous at this point. Make sure that it's aligned in that corner. Make sure all the excess ink is off and then press it down. And first time, I didn't even have to do twice on that one. I was like super excited. So now I have to go and place all my little hearts back on. And those are my little virtual hugs. And can you see I put little tiny hearts on the little girl that's standing on the steps and then the grandmother's hand and those are them receiving each other's hugs. And those tiny hearts are the ones I kept losing from the little mailbox thing but I found them and now I'm still filling up that middle. So I cut out some of the flowers in the same pink that was on the house and the little accents on the house. And I back those with just some white cardstock. And now I'm going to color in the birds with B93 and B95 and then put a little dot on the eye. And I'm still, still playing with what I'm going to put on and still playing with those birds. So I decided to go ahead and color a second one because this one was going to be with the other family and the birds needed to send hugs to each other too because they were also social distancing. See, they all have to have a story. So adding that little heart into the beak, 
I found more, or actually I went and die cut some more of those little hearts. So now the birds are going to send hearts to each other. And you can see that there are three birds because I went and I die cut another one and I reversed it. I just flipped it over and colored that blue. And I lost another heart here, as you can see in the poor little third bird that doesn't even get onto the card. I'm looking for the heart and nope, can't find it. So I have to remove the little heart from his beak. And now he's sad because he doesn't have a hug. But that's just the way it goes. So I'm going to add those hearts in between the birds and they are sending hugs as well. And then that fills that middle space and all is good in the card country. <laughs> and now my card base, like I said before, is 9x4. So it's a 9x8 panel and scored at the 4 inch. And then I'm using some of the new Lawn Fawn dot paper. There's a better name for it than dot paper. Let me find that for you is Lawn Fundamentals Texture Dot Cardstock in Pastels. And I love dot things, so yeah, I, that's what I did the houses with, so I went with the purple for my frame. And now I'm just gluing everything down and into place. I love this card. Oh, did, and I didn't mention it, but I put the little kitty in the one window that I could still open because I didn't go glue crazy on that one. And so up on the grandparents' house, there's a little kitty in the window. And now I had so many pieces left over that I thought I needed to do a little surprise in the middle or in the inside of the card. So I cut out another piece of the tree background from the leafy frame and just placed that in the inside and decorated it with a tree and some flowers. And finally, I found a home for the bird bath. And I had a, a yellow bird already cut and I place that and see that little heart that that bird is getting the blue bird is still sad because that is the the heart that I had lost that I had to take it out of his beak but I found a home and there's the little kitty hiding in the window saying hi and I love this card and just to finish off some touches I added a little bit of bling in the corner because you know you have to have a little bling and then I'm gonna add a little bit of glitter on those hearts with the Lawn Fawn glitter pen and those are all the final touches for today. So before we go, I just wanted to shout out again to our sponsor, One, Only One Life Creations. This is an amazing small business of caring people that are giving back to the community and the world, actually. They are missionaries that have taken over this business and one of their mission statements for the business is the purpose of the store is not to amass wealth, which will one day be worth nothing, but to invest in charities and missions work around the world, which makes a real difference in people's lives. So supporting this store is supporting a lot of people. So thank you again to them. Generous sponsorship. I will have the store linked below in order to enter for a chance to win the shopping spree, please hop along and comment and like on everybody's videos. We put a lot of time and effort into this because we all share that love of Lawn Fawn. Um, this is literally one of my favorite hops that I do and we do it quarterly and I look forward to that. Um, so make sure you spread the love. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please do so. I'd appreciate your support. Thank you very much to my friend Carrie Rhodes for putting this together. You rock. You're awesome. I love you. I will have the next person on the hop listed below in the description. And happy crafting, everyone.